Alright, welcome back to the channel and we're today we're going to be doing another starting guide for Warhammer 3 and uh, today, if you haven't figured out from the video, we're going to be covering Village the Cursling. He is in the Champions of Chaos DLC pack, pretty much the last DLC that has been released for Warhammer 3 and uh, we're going to take a look at him today. And yes, he is just a little creepy. Alright, there you go. And that's his intro video from Total War. Alright, so when we're looking at uh, Village here, before we enter the campaign, he's got a, quite a few different faction effects, but first let's look at his starting army. Uh, he's got the Chaos Warriors of Zinch, Doom Knights of Zinch, which these are flying cav, uh, Spawn of Zinch, Monstrous Infantry, your standard Marauders, uh, Marauders of Zinch and Forsaken of Zinch in his army to start out with. Faction effects, his vassals gain increased barrier hit points and spread Zinch corruption. Has ac access to changing of the ways. Forces receive benefits for having high winds of magic. Convert converts a portion of own battle casualties into souls. Has access to Zinch teleport stance. Steal 15% of the experience earned by other lords. Just This is your lord effects, so just for village. He has a passive, passive ability called the Twisted Twin. Um, this is a passive of ability that will be active all the time and the more um, time you spend in melee combat or casting spells actually ramps up this ability up to 20% spell mastery and up to 8 melee defense and attack so he's kind of a as you might guess a bit of a hybrid unit because of the way in the storyline he is woke up merged to his brother whatever in the lore portion of this you can read that on your own but his brother is you know strong and good melee fighter and he is actually a wizard so put them together and of course it's a hybrid unit right uh, then also teleport stance usage cost is minus 25% winds of magic so that's you know that may not mean a lot to you right now you may have to get into the campaign to see what some of these things actually mean so we're going to go ahead and jump on in now all right here we go so I've got the campaign loaded up. Uh, first thing you'll see is how they play. Collect souls from mortal factions throughout your campaign to sacrifice to the dark gods in return for faction-wide boons granted by gifts of chaos. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Erect dark fortresses across the north and vassalize the local tri tribes as you conquer Norskin homeland capitals to establish your centers of power. Instantly muster warband units into your armies from your lord's localities to quickly build your military might. Upgrade units into more powerful forms while devoting them to your chosen god to grant them dark authority army bonuses. Uh, you can ascend characters through Paths to glory to devote them to specific gods and progress lords towards eventual demonhood. I'm gonna go through these a little bit here. 
so as you fight battles you will collect souls but anyways you'll get souls from fighting battles so these will accumulate over time as you play through your campaign uh, this hero you start yes. with is the lore of metal so searing doom Gehenna's golden hounds all of that plague of rust you're already familiar with his uh, spells probably so I'm gonna move him into the Magic army here uh, the warband recruitment that it was talking about here what that means is that this is turn one I do not have a settlement I do not have any settlements at all but I can still recruit so each turn the different units can become part of this can become available for warband recruitment so I can immediately recruit these units does not affect my movement for the turn anything like that so you can buff your army up before you get ready to go into battle uh, the other thing I wanted to cover really quick before we really get into this is this dark fortress so these dark fortresses are really the only settlements you care about keeping for yourself and you can see this symbol here right next to them that says dark fortress site these are the ones that you want to keep and build up everything else like all the minor settlements you want to be either raising them or gifting them to vassals and you when you raise them it will give you dark it'll give you souls and other yeah yeah we'll we'll look into it in a minute when I get to fighting um, let's see upgrade units into more powerful forms while devoting them to your chosen God blah 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 so what that means is you have this button here with the warband upgrades so if I pick the marauders just the standard marauders uh, I think we're done with this anyways so this particular marauder is just a standard marauder so that means I can uh, go up I think this is chaos undivided and upgrade this unit into different units um, I can upgrade it to this and then turn them into cav or I can upgrade them up this line and turn them into chaos spawn and eventually to aspiring champions oh wait that arrows going this way so maybe you turn aspiring champions into chaos spawn I'm not real certain on that one we'll have to look into that um, I don't really see much of the use of doing this the standard marauders uh, I I think it's probably better to devote them to zinch and that will turn them into marauders of zinch now this does add an extra step but basically you already start with well just one marauder of zinch you also have uh, two units of chaos warriors which are up here on this second tier so basically I, these marauders of zinch I have here once they get to rank 5 I believe I can upgrade them to chaos warriors of zinch or into forsaken of zinch either way uh, and from forsaken of zinch they upgrade to spawn of zinch so this entire army well not the entire army but all of these units like this that you start with can be upgraded into better units as they get more kills and gain ranks so that's what they're talking about the upgrading the units also if you get the marauder horsemen you can turn them into the chariots uh, it'll be a few turns before you're going to get marauder horsemen though but it is something to keep an eye on 
What that does mean is you need to find ways to get these units into battle and get them kills and not have your units wiped out because then you'll lose all your progress towards progressing them up to better units. Um, so that'll cover that. I'm going to try... Yeah, see, I'm going to try to just auto-resolve through this. See here, I can sacrifice the captives for souls and total favor. I can get army replenishment or unit experience. I mean, the unit experience would be good because of the upgrades we were just talking about. But the souls are generally more important early on. Um... Let me see if I can up auto resolve this. I can. I'll use lose a unit, but that doesn't. Just pretend I didn't lose this unit, and uh, you, that you, in your own campaign, actually fought this battle, um, and and were able to keep that unit. So, once you win this battle for the Red Fortress. And this is still on turn one. You'll notice we have the raise option and we will get souls from that. Um, sacking will give us unit experience. But occupy and vassalize. That means we're going to gain w the closest Norskin tribe as a v vassal. And we're going to get 500 souls from doing this. So... We'll go ahead and pick that option. So what that means is this right here, this Foundry of Bones and the faction it belongs to, the USAC here, these are now our vassals. Um, so from here you can push on out and take out the Dragon's Crossroad and when you do you can gift it to your vassal. So every turn you're going to get passive income from your vassals based on how much money they're earning. So giving them land like this that really isn't worth anything to you anyways just increases your income a little bit. Um, they will also raise armies and use them to, you know, fight fight the same people that you'll be fighting they'll join wars with you and all that so they are somewhat useful okay so at this point let's talk about the gifts of chaos uh, if you click on that button this screen shows up so this will be your gifts of zinch you need to pay attention to this because it costs 500 souls to pick one of these and as you go down they get more expensive including some that have a ridiculous price to them 20,000 souls down there at the bottom 25,000 anyways the first three here are the ones that you can pick right off the bat these are the ones that you will most likely want so on this first turn I would pick either the screamers of zinch or the pink horrors of zinch I'm actually going to pick the pink horrors for now if you like the flying units those are fun too I mean it's just your choice right so you'll notice this has a cost of 500 souls but it also has an upkeep of 50 souls per turn so as long as you keep this active it's going to drain you of 50 souls per turn now if you you can look here this is the gifts of chaos undivided um, me personally I detest chaos furies they're they're they get wiped out so often they're not even worth you know recruiting normally much less paying 500 souls to get them and then now I, I don't really think that's worth it 
This, I mean, it could be okay, but I, I don't really care for it. But this one here is particularly useful in my opinion. So your Chaos Marauder units will get 10% casualty replenishment and 8 melee attack for Marauder units, which are your base units that you're trying to upgrade. So, uh, yeah, just keeping that going is, is really nice. This last effect is granted by technology and I'll show you that here in just a second. We'll get out of this. I'm going to go ahead and activate them. Um, in your, that's the wrong one, in your technology. So if you pick up this first tech, that effect will be active when, when the three turns are done. Um, so at this point, let's see if we can, no, there's no more warband recruitment, but that we have gifted units that we can now recruit. So we can get two of these pink horrors. Um, so we'll go ahead and grab those right now. Uh, I don't even know why I'm, I'm I just, it, it's like an OCD thing. I can't keep from putting the points in, whatever. It's, I'm not even going to look where I'm pointing them. I just don't want to look at them. Anyways, um. These built your main settlement building, the Chaos Keep, is kind of interesting because you're getting growth income, walls to the settlement, and zinch corruption, defensive supplies, all that fun stuff. Plus allegiance points, plus 10% with the uh, Norska. As you upgrade it, these bonuses j just keep getting better. Um, the one thing I wanted to point out is here no not this it's this one uh, and you can't get this until level 2 but this building will increase income from all buildings in adjacent regions that that is your buildings and vassal buildings so just keep that in mind that I mean it probably doesn't look like that big of a bonus at when you just look at it but you've got to realize you're getting increased income from your vassals settlements nearby as well um, I'm gonna pick the growth I'm not actually going to build the second building for right now because of my income does not seem to be all that high now I know we haven't gone over the changing of the ways yet but we're about to the reason I haven't yet is because I didn't want to use that ability on the first turn but essentially you're going to have a pretty ridiculous army on turn two, uh, well, at the at the end of turn two, you're going to have a pretty ridiculous army. Even considering, uh, f for the sake of making this video a little shorter, I auto resolved those first two battles and took more casualties and lost an entire unit. Right. So, if I hadn't done that, my army would be at 14 units right now. So. What we're going to do now is look at the changing of the ways. Right here on turn one, we can do this spawnify. That's going to add three, up to three chaos spawn to any army. So I'm going to pick my army there. I could pick a vassal's army if I really wanted to, but, you know, I don't want to do that. Uh, there are different different abilities you can use this the important thing to note here though is there is a 15 turn cooldown duration for using this ability so i'm going to well first let's look at the other abilities you can spend 250 souls to drain 
40 wins of magic from a targeted army and transfer a portion over time to your faction leader so village will get more wins of magic from this so that's pretty good reveal factions intentions you can display the current intentions of a faction's army and it lasts five turns so you can pick any faction that you have discovered apparently reveal shroud you can reveal the shroud over all of a faction's territory if you want and muddle mines you can reduce movement range, ambush defense, and leadership of a targeted army, which is, you know, pretty strong as well. We do not have the technology researched yet to be able to break alliances, but that will be... <laughs> you will be able to break alliances between two factions, say if you're getting ready to go to war with one of them and do not want... To have to deal with both factions at once you can use this go to war with the one that you choose not have to worry about the second one at least immediately so uh, I'm gonna use the spawnify though here on the second turn and there we go I have four spawn of zinch units in my army now so if I hadn't been an idiot and auto resolved that the first two battles and actually played them normally I would have my starting army would be up to 17 units right now with four spawn of zinch doom knights and then these units here are actually you know fairly decent as well I know the marauders are a base unit the chaos warhounds are just crappy but all in all you're looking at an insanely powerful army here at the end of turn two and honestly my biggest problem at the moment is my income I mean so uh, I could recruit more well no I can't oh so I have a 4% chance on the next turn to be able to recruit Chaos Trolls. And they are one of the units that you can get the Warband upgrades with. Um, so Chaos Trolls can upgrade to Armored Chaos Trolls. And that's really all they can do, but just the fact that they can be upgraded makes me like them a little more. And you'll notice I picked the pink horrors of Zinch from our uh, Gifts of Chaos. And the reason I, I don't know, I, I like them. But also they can be ex upgraded to Exalted Pink Horrors. Again, kind of personal preference. I don't think they get really that big of a bonus. Maybe... Maybe they do. Here it's, it shows you how much of a bonus they get. 600 hit points, 10 armor, 10 leadership, 8 more melee attack, 12 more melee defense, 4 weapon strength, 2 charge bonus, and 5 missile strength. So, I mean, nothing just, like, huge, I suppose, other than the melee defense and melee attack. Those are really good bonuses and the missile strength but I mean just huge upgrades there just making these units better and it gives you a little bit of ranged firepower in your army which is you know as you can see a little bit lacking and it usually is for chaos factions but that's okay so as you progress here, uh, I mean, yes, you could attack the uh, Cathay, the gates here pretty early if you wanted to. Your army is probably strong enough that you may could get away with it. But honestly, your first few turns you want to be working through. So you'll take this, give it to your vassal. This one is 
there is an army in Bloodwind Keep here that is really about the worst threat you're going to face early game and it's only that big of a threat because this is a province capital so it's a walled settlement but they will have a hell cannon in here which I found really annoying and painful to deal with but after you take out the army that's in this settlement this campaign is just super easy to get started uh, after you take out that army though you'll want to keep Bloodwing Keep because it's a dark fortress site so you'll have the same upgrades there as you will here here we'll take a look at some of the buildings you can get in the red fortress I mean these are these are honestly pretty good this this one here as I was saying earlier you can buff that up to 40% income from all buildings which will include your vassals buildings so that's pretty huge you can get up to where you can recruit the chaos giant um, just a lot of different things you can do with these dark fortresses but mainly because of this main settlement building uh, you get you get up to where you're getting that passive income from these buildings and it's as well as your vassals and you should have a pretty easy time uh, in my in my campaign I went ahead and took the dragon's crossroad and iron storm gave them to my vassal and then I believe there's one more dark fortress site here that you'll want to take I took all of these before I ever even looked at the at the uh, Cathay the gates here I think one's the dragon gate and one's the snake gate I, I can't remember turtle gate that's the other one but you can go quite a ways back here and level up your lord and your troops a good bit before you ever look at taking the uh, gates here and taking the fight into Cathay you don't actually have to go through these gates I don't believe you could leave your vassals here to deal with the gates and they, they will probably keep Cathay's armies out of your land to where you probably don't even have to be worried about getting attacked at least for a good while and continue pushing this way if you really wanted to I mean it's just up to you at that point but uh, that's all I've got for you all in all I mean I found this to be just a real easy start uh, it does they do have a lot to keep up with you need to keep an eye on your upkeep for your gifts of chaos and if you get low on souls taking these taking these off is all you really have to do is go back to the screen hit remove gift and you're no no longer losing the souls every turn for the upkeep um, so I mean all, all in all a really easy start uh, a lot of fun honestly his he's got a lot of monstrous units and uh, flying cav you can get flying monstrous units uh, it's it's actually a lot a lot of fun and a fairly easy start for a campaign if that's what you looking for I mean this is an easy one to jump into they are just overpowered honestly if, if we're being honest but that's all I have for you today uh, leave me a like comment subscribe let me know what you think about it and I'll see you next time